Hello and welcome to another edition of Great Britain and the Voice of London show with me, Ian Pern Turner. And me, Helena Shard. So we've got another great show on ALB UK television today and we're going to be talking about all sorts of things. We're going to be talking about cancer charities, we're going to be talking with our wonderful guests from Wales and we're going to be talking about some of the news at the same time. So let's roll the trailer and let the show begin. So we've got lots to talk about today. Um, obviously the war in the Ukraine continues, but we want to shed some light. Um, and I think it's a lovely story uh, that I would like to talk about. And it's to do with two Ukrainian ice skaters. And they received standing ovations, cheers, because they competed in the World Championships in Montpellier in France. They haven't been able to train, as you can imagine. Um, they made up their dance very, very quickly. It was a really emotional dance um, and they sobbed and hugged each other at the end. And I, I just think it just, it shows hope and it's really quite inspirational. And we've got a clip to show you, so I think we should run that now. Well, this performance was not about ice dancing. It was deeper, it was rooted in who they are as people, where they live. It was not a made up story. It was a real story brought to the ice. Not many words to be able to fairly and accurately describe. So that was uh, Maxim and Alexandra, and I think actually amazing that they made it there after everything that they've gone through, the strength. The, the, the strength of the Ukrainian people is just unbelievable. You know, I think it's, it's several million now that have come out of the country. Please God that uh, these talks that have started again today between Russia and Ukraine um, stop this war going on at all because it's just the most disastrous war i was with one of my ukrainian friends that we both know on sunday and you could see sketched on her face that the amount of problems that the ukrainians are facing at the moment and and it's the most disastrous thing i think i've ever seen yeah absolutely and um we just pray that these, these negotiations in turkey i think it is today isn't it yeah. we hope that uh, something comes of it um as we know music well creativity in general but music brings everybody together and i am so excited we're really excited that concert for the concert for ukraine is actually on tonight at eight o'clock it's a live concert um, in Birmingham, uh, but it will be shown on ITV. And it's definitely worth watching. It's huge, huge names. 
um, all the stars that we know and everyone's given their time every single penny is going towards the disasters emergency committee so DEC um, and lots of people I'm sure will be donating it's gonna, it's well worth seeing and there's going to be lots of case studies I'm sure lots of crying lots of strength um, and I so look forward to seeing it. And in fact, I, all people like uh, Ed Sheeran and um, people you've just seen um, on the screen, but there's one person or one group, it's the Kingdom Choir, that I really am looking oh, forward yes. to seeing. Because they, they played at Harry and Meghan's uh, wedding. And actually Karen Gibson, MBE, she, she was a teacher prior to this all taking off um, at LSU, which is near us in North London. Yes. Um, and they are, you know, amazing, aren't they? So I'm quite excited to see that. I, I think, you know, the, the beauty of things like this are that artists all want to help. They all want to do something. I mean, and what's even more remarkable is that the British people, just in one week, uh, we raised 100 million pounds. This is just by normal people's donations, children with their pocket money, old age pensioners just putting in what they can. And the, the reality is it just shows the warmth that we want uh, Ukrainians to feel when they come to Britain. That's, I think that's a very important thing at the moment. It is, it's absolutely important. And I know all the stars have been there since early morning doing their sound checks and getting everything ready. Um, and when you, when you hear them talking, they're so enthusiastic, you know, they wouldn't have missed it for the world. And it's lovely, isn't it, to have that platform and, and to be able to give like that. And I just, I know it's going to be a success. It's going to be fabulous. And it's, it's, it's important for them as well, because I think everybody, you know, we've been talking on all our TV shows about Ukraine as well. And I think everybody who has a public voice just wants to help, just wants to support, just wants to highlight what is going on at the moment. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Um, moving on to uh, Royally Rich. So there's lots of uh, royal special things going on, but today at Westminster Abbey, um, it's taken place and we watched carefully. So, so happy that Her Majesty the Queen made the Remembrance Day today at Westminster Abbey. Um, obviously she's had mobility issues, but she, ha she wouldn't have missed it for the world. I don't think we've seen her now for, for six months at a major event. Um, so she attended the service. Um, Westminster Abbey, she knows only too well. I think she had her coronation there. Um, I think the last time she was there with uh, Prince Philip was in 2018, 2017, I think it was. Um, and lots of people turned up today, obviously the royal family and grandchildren, and, and it was, it was a, a, quite a jolly affair. We had lots of foreign royalty as well, and lots of charities that Prince Philip was involved with. Um, and we wish it had been a bit sunny, sunnier. But I think the fact that Her Majesty made oh, it I, I, absolutely. is... And, and I think, if I remember rightly, the two of us were filming, and I think it was Commonwealth Day. Yeah. Uh, it was either 2017 or 2018 was the last time we, we worked yes. with her at um, Westminster Abbey. Mm, absolutely. Um, and it's, oh, I, I, it, it was beautiful. I do want to watch the rerun of it, actually, but I haven't seen it all. Mm. Um, but I think it's just a nice... It's lovely because obviously it was COVID, wasn't it? So yeah. that we couldn't have actually. And there was lots of singing. We have a bit of a video of it now. Yeah, I think we do. I hope we do. It'd be lovely to see. Um, and they were singing, and I think it's a whole dedication, isn't it, to Prince let's, Philip? Let's play to the video. Let's play the video. We give thanks for His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. A man of rare ability and distinction, rightly honoured and celebrated, he ever directed our attention away from himself. He put privilege to work and understood his rank as a spur to service. He devoted his astonishing intellectual and physical energy 
his enormous capacity for sheer hard work to a host of down-to-earth enterprises. Moreover, nobody would ever doubt his loyalty and deep devotion to our Queen and to their family. Yet, there were times when he could be abrupt, maybe in robust conversation, forgetting just how intimidating he could be. He could be somewhat sharp in pricking what he thought to be bubbles of pomposity or sycophancy. Like the rest of us, he was part of flawed humanity. So there we are. That was, that was a lovely send-off, and it's just really lovely to recognise the importance of his importance of his legacy. Absolutely, and and uh, she was walking. Do you know, I, yeah. I, I was because you have seen <laughs> yeah. this new golf buggy that she's got. There's fifty thousand, but I, I I thought we were going to see her coming on the golf buggy. How could you know? see I was looking West forward to the golf it. buggy, but she but she managed to. Uh, uh, come down the aisle, but I've got, I've got this vision of this gold buggy <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, with, with some with some uh, chauffeur with a peak cap in front driving her down the aisle. I just thought that would have been a great one to do, but um, bless her heart, you I know. Think, I think she'll be doing that around Windsor, but not Westminster Abbey. I think she's <laughs> snuck in through Poets Corner. I think she, it is, she so came she in, yeah, um... r r rather than that one. But um, I mean because until very recently she hasn't been mobile at all and so uh, uh, and obviously on the arm of the Duke of York which is very significant it is they're very trying significant. to bring the Duke of York back I think in some but, ways but not as well. to forget he is her son and it is a family affair yes um, so we may not be seeing him we may well, not miss, this may be it we'll this may see. be it we'll, we'll see. see we'll see we'll <laughs> see um, I think as well, I think worth talking about, because I know that people have been talking about it for a long time now. So the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have returned from their eight day trip. We've obviously seen them um, at uh, Westminster, but um, there's been a lot of, you know, I think there's been, there's always people media wise that will always attack, um, which, is, which is a big shame because they were welcomed hugely um, throughout the tour. There were a few blips, but you know, um, I think everyone knew about them prior to going. Well, I, I, I think, I mean, they were ambushed, let's be honest, they were ambushed mm. by the Prime Minister of, of Jamaica, mm. um, uh, where, he's, where, he, where they're in front of him, and now he's saying that they want to, to become, um, you know... Uh, be made to a republic. Absolutely. But, but I think I, the, the whole thing is, is that, you know, Her Majesty the Queen always has given... 100% service and the same for the Duke yeah. and Duchess and and everyone's known about it I mean Barbados obviously has yeah. happened and I don't think it's it's such a big deal um, it's absolutely fine I, I don't know there's two senses of opinion but but I, I think in reality what the West Indies that area should remember is the reality was this wasn't for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex this was them representing the Queen you know, uh, and, and I, I think perhaps some of the things that happened during uh, their eight day event, um, you know, perhaps were in slightly bad taste. Yeah, uh, but it was obviously wasn't the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's fault. I think, unfortunately, the, the advisors, they should have had us as chief advisor. Um, I think they could have thought up some more um, creative storyboards. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, that the, uh, William and Kate um, they tried very well. I believe another set of royals is off to the Caribbean again. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether that's to repair the damage or not. But I, I, I think, you know, the, the reality was, was that uh, the two of them did their very best. They kept their cool mm. uh, at a time when it's very hot. And I think uh, William uh, came out of it at the end, um, hopefully even more looking like a future monarch. I think, I think, he I think, it very I well. think so completely. I think the one thing that, um, looking back, is that they do want to modernise the family 
a little bit more just with certain, in, in some respects and they recognize that maybe the the jeep situation where they tried to copy her majesty the queen of her yeah. but that was in the 60s but again that was that was bad judgment we're in a different time aren't we but, we're in but a I, time. I think that was actually suggested as i understand it by the people out in the caribbean that they wanted to reenact it yeah. and, and apparently okay. according to what i'm hearing William didn't want to do this in the first place. I heard that too. I heard that too. Um, and actually, Camilla Tomney, who's one of our fellow uh, royal correspondents, she she's came up with something which I thought was quite genius. She said that um, obviously everyone was talking, but rather than do the jeep situation with them standing in, in all the, the the outfits, is to have them driving the jeep and have the pr prime minister and his wife of Jamaica all done up in their sort of regalia waving you know you could just see it just would wow. be a bit of a pr coup wouldn't it put a bit of light on it because i just think it's been a little bit damning and they've done a, a really really good job yeah. so it was worth making a, um, a point but also the i think the uh, tour operators are saying that it's people actually searching to go to the caribbean it's gone up by about 500 percent. so lots of people in great wow. britain are, are looking at uh, getting out there so um it's done a bit of good hasn't Absolutely. it as well in that respect Absolutely. and i i think as well we've got um uh, a great video to show uh, one of our charity videos uh, for cancer yes cancer research uk I, th I think it's important right now um as we've been uh, saying over the past few weeks this show is now very much dedicated to supporting charities, promoting charities, showing what they can actually do, uh, how they bring so much value. It's the same with communities. We want to bring as many different people from communities on as possible. Um, and obviously uh, today we're going to bring our great Welsh friend on. So, so uh, that, that's another community excited. in itself as well. Absolutely. So that will be shown after. Um, we have our short break in a minute, but I, I think quite rightly so that um, I know you, you have a great interest in, you know, in uh, awareness for the cancer charities as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's one in two people, I believe, born after 1960 will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. Um, and it's, it's actually the leading cause of death worldwide. So yeah. it's so important that you know, all charities are recognised, but this obviously is a major charity. Um, and I know that the, the clip that we've got is a, a current one. Um, and obviously all money is put into research 24 seven, which is most needed. Yeah. So shall we roll the clip? I think we should. So together we'll make it happen. That's brilliant, isn't so it? Cancer Research UK for that charity. So it is, and it's very important right now. I, I think um, at the moment we're in a time where I, you know, I, I think it's quite hard. It's going to be even harder for Britain, you know, in the next few months. And I think we need on this show and with ALB UK Television as well to show hope. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what it's all about. So we're now going to take a very short break and then we're going to bring one of our favourite uh, people in from Wales, Victoria George Fielon. Uh, she's going to be talking about several of her new projects, uh, what a pantomime is like. So it's going to be a, a very interesting second half of the show. So stay tuned. <laughs>
Welcome back to the second part of the show and we have a fabulous video to run and it is on Wales, my favourite part of the country. I am part Welsh, Welsh, Welsh Wales, and that's on my mother's side. Um, it's beautiful and I think we should run it. So that was such a lovely video. That was beautiful. And I just want to go to Wales and oh, just I think um, possibly I will be going to Wales soon because I'm so excited to invite um, Victoria George Vale. She's back with us. Um, she is our Wales correspondent, uh, a most talented lady. Um, hello, Victoria. Hello. Hello. How are you all today? Oh, all the better for seeing you. We're so happy you're back with us. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to be back. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, it's very gloomy today in Wales, but oh well, the spring will return. I guess it's the same in England. Well, well, <laughs> it, 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 the sun is shining in England. I'm sorry to tell you this. Oh, no. <laughs> for, for once it's the other way <laughs> the around. But you're good. looking... We had a lovely weekend. Very, very pretty. I love the yellow dress. Are you looking very summery today? Thank you. Well, I thought, you know, considering we don't have the sunshine here, I thought I'd wear the sunshine instead. Absolutely. Great. It's great. So, Victoria, I know you've been so busy. You're such a creative bunny and I'm always so interested in everything that you're doing. Um, and also you're in beautiful Wales and I haven't visited for such a long time. Um, so I know you've got lots to share with us. So we will hand it over to you to, to give us some tidbits. What, yeah, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, -wise? okay, so but first of all, we're expecting snow towards the end of this week, which is rather interesting. I think most of the country is, especially up north, uh, but I guess it's the time of year, so there we go. Uh, masks are also now uh, not a requirement in Wales from yesterday onwards, so the 20th of March onwards, you do not have to wear a mask or face covering for COVID, which is great. Um, and uh, yes, it's just all very busy here in Wales. We actually have a lot of musical events coming up, actually, which is really exciting because it's so nice to see things opening up, um, having people, you know, crowds and lots of lovely events and music festivals happening and theatres and concerts, which is a massive part of Welsh culture here. So um, coming up in, I think it's July through to August in Trigaron, we have uh, the National Eisteddfod, which is a huge deal. It's, it's a massive Welsh celebration of Welsh music, culture and language, and it attracts lots of people from around the country to compete in the National Eisteddfod of Wales. So it's a huge, huge deal here for us Welsh. And we're so excited. We have lots of, uh, we have lots of stars coming to Cardiff Castle this, this summer, actually. We have Brian Adams, and Lionel Richie, so they'll be coming in June and July. So we're very, very excited about that. And you've obviously just been come out of a pantomime. Your sister is in another musical, I think, as well. So tell us, first of all, explain to people who may not know what a pantomime is. Perhaps tell us about that. And also tell us about what your sister is doing at the moment as well. Oh, thank you for recognising. So, uh, <laughs> a pantomime, for those of you who don't know, uh, is basically, it's a bit like a musical, but a, a lot more comedy 
and a lot more freedom for us performers to do the things that we would want to do on stage, such as make a joke up on the spot or improvise, for instance. And there's a lot of audience interaction and there's usually a dame involved, which is played by a man. Um, so that's quite a funny character to play. And uh, yes, it's always it's very fairy tale like. So you have things like Cinderella, Snow White, Jack and the Beanstalk. It's all very child friendly with underlying adult jokes, which obviously the children won't understand. But that's all good. So there's something for adults and the children. Um, but I just finished a pantomime. It was Cinderella, and they always like to play um, have a lady to play the lead boy character uh, for Rainbow Valley Productions, starring Owen Money, who's a very big Welsh uh, personality radio TV star here in Wales. So I played Prince Charming. Uh, so I actually played Prince Charming with Owen Money in 2017 and so that was nice to kind of reprise my role and um, yeah that was that was a lot of fun. So we actually got cancelled in January because of Covid, the theatre restrictions, they were all shut down which was quite emotionally, it was very upsetting for us actors actually because you know we'd been off stage for two years and then to have to, to go back to, to the theatre and perform on stage in December was amazing. We were honestly so grateful. And then obviously January hit and all the theatres had to be shut down and that was a real big blow for us. Um, so that was quite upsetting, but we do understand, you know, COVID happens um, and we didn't want it to spread anymore. But then we got to finish our, um, our tour and we finished in February, so we managed to return to the theatre for one week in February uh, and we finished Cinderella, so we completed the tour and we were just so very happy about that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm so happy we managed to finish it. You know, we didn't finish on a sort of sour note in, at Christmas time. So that was nice to complete the whole thing. Um, and my sister, Lavinia, she, she's just finished, actually. She did, uh, she played Princess Fiona um, in Shrek. And that was up in Scotland. So it was West End goes to Scotland. So they had a sort of um, a weekend full of uh, musicals and Lavinia played Princess Fiona and that was her dream role. That's one of her dream roles anyway. I think she'd like to be Christine in Phantom of the Opera. That's a big one. <laughs> but um, she absolutely loved playing Princess Fiona and it was so nice to go up there and to see Scotland as well because my parents and I have never been to Scotland. So. That was that was educational for us. Wow, whereabouts in Scotland? Just out of interest, was it sort of Edinburgh? Uh, we flew or? into Edinburgh. We flew into Edinburgh. So the theatre was, I think, uh, a little drive outside of Edinburgh. I can't remember the name of the the area exactly. Um, but the, yeah, they had John Partridge from EastEnders um, starring in in the show as well, which was really exciting. A lot more West End stars too. And I was just so proud of her and she's, she's done so incredibly well. So congratulations for being here. We're all rooting for you. <laughs> but Edinburgh was beautiful and we managed to have a couple of spare, spare hours to, to hire a car and to, to drive around the coast. So we managed to see St Andrews. That was a really quick, brief visit, but we managed to drive up there just to say we've actually been to St Andrews. And the coast is beautiful, actually. The, the sea is quite blue. And uh, Edinburgh was gorgeous. I remember seeing the castle and walking up the Royal Mile with all the little gift shops and the cobbled streets and the history and the architecture is amazing there. Yeah. Simon MacDonald would be very pleased. <laughs> we'll pass that on. Yeah, I feel like I'm promoting Scotland right now. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's good. It's, it's Great Britain. It's all, all good. Um, and, and also, because obviously we showed some videos on, on cancer research and uh, we've got cancer, um, Stand Up for Cancer um, happening at the moment and people raising money, etc. And I know that you're always doing these fab fabulous charitable events or raising money. And I think one of them, if you'd like to share it with us, is you did a, a quite an extensive walk, uh, uh, which would be great for you, everyone Helena. to hear about. Yes, I did. It was a long, it was the biggest challenge for a charity that I have ever done. Um, to date, up to date, I may do another one, but I think I need a rest first. So basically, I walked, uh, I think it was 867 or 876, I can't remember which way around it was, 867 miles um, for Cancer Research UK. 
and that was the equal distance, uh, the length of the United Kingdom, so from Land's End to John O'Groves. So I didn't actually walk from Land's End to John O'Groves itself, I just did the equal distance. Um, so that was such a long walk, but it was so worth it because I, I've always supported Cancer Research UK and it's something really close to my heart. Um, I know a, a lot of people actually close to me who do suffer with cancer. Um, and unfortunately, I know someone who's lost their battle to cancer. Um, so I always feel like it's a charity that nobody could ever raise enough money for. It's something that really does need the, the funds um, because, you know, it's become a cancer is just it's everywhere, you know, and it, it's definitely something that's always been really close to my heart. So I decided to walk the length of the UK <laughs> and I managed to do it. I did it in a couple of months, a good few months it took me. I walked every day um, unless it was absolutely pouring down, um, but it was something well worthwhile. I'm so, I'm so proud of myself that I actually did that amount of walking um, and it kept me fit, it kept me healthy as well. So, and I managed to raise a lot of money for it, a good couple of hundred pounds for cancer. So I'm, I'm very grateful to everyone's donations. Well, well done with that, uh, Victoria. I, I know as well, I think you're, you're still teaching uh, young uh, children with, with a theatre school as well. So how important is it to bring on the next generation? And do you think theatre skills are really something really worthwhile to teach young children? Do you know what? I'm so glad you asked that question, Ian, because it's such a good question. I think some people maybe don't understand, and this is absolutely fine, don't understand the importance of um, the positive benefits to mental health um, through performing arts or singing, acting and dancing, especially through a pandemic, especially through COVID where we couldn't go out and teach children. We physically weren't allowed. So I had to move all of my performing arts lessons for the children and the teenagers online on Zoom, which was a rather big challenge, <laughs> but I managed to do it and that kept children going. And I remember receiving one message from one parent saying that this literally has, they look forward to the classes every single week. It's something to do, it's something to keep them interested in, in the arts because theatre is so, so important. And I think especially for children and teenagers who are maybe going through a rough time or they're not sure what to do in life or maybe you know some teenagers young adults are on the streets unfortunately um and then you know they're not living a very good life let's say and i think that to bring them in and teach them a hip-hop lesson or a street lesson or a ballet lesson or a drama lesson it's so so vital for their mental health and it's really nice because i feel personally like I am inspiring my students and I want them to be the best they can be. And it's also good for their public speaking as well and to speak up for themselves and to even how to walk down the street. Um, I know that my dancers, they walk very well now and in heels and things like that. And that's because they go to a ballet lesson with me or a lyrical dance lesson. Um, and I think, you know, with the overall mental health situation these days, it is so important to keep the arts going, especially for the younger generation, because I think it helps them appreciate classical music and things like that as well. I think, uh, I know you'll both agree with me on this one, but classical music is so important and it's so good for your brain as well. I think it gives off happy hormones or something. Um, I remember someone when I was doing GCSEs, um, my O level exams, someone said to me, oh Victoria, before you do your GCSEs in the morning, because I think they lasted a week, so every morning at breakfast listen to Mozart or some sort of classical music piece. So I did and apparently it helps, it, it kind of makes you a little bit more intelligent or become, makes you become awake or something like that, I don't know, something to do with the brain. So even that is incredible, but I think it, the arts, I cannot stress how, how amazing it is for mental health and how much, how much of a positive impact it has on children these days. Um, yeah, definitely. What, 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 what's, what's the name of your school and, and how can people get in contact with you about that? 
So um, they can get in touch uh, by, well, my email address. <laughs> but the name of the school is Victoria George Real. So it's just my, my full name and then School of Performing Arts. So it's a long name, but it's Victoria George Real School of Performing Arts. I don't have a website um, because I've never felt that I've needed one, to be honest, because it's kind of been word of mouth, uh, the promotion around the local areas. Um, so if they do want to get in touch with me, then I guess that they can contact me on my Instagram account. I'm always on there, so I'll always answer the, the messages, uh, which is Victoria dot George underscore veal so victoria dot george underscore veal and they're all held in cardiff and just in the outskirts of cardiff in wales do you know victoria i didn't realize it was your school and it's when you said said it to me i was like wow that's amazing so thank you for sharing oh, that that's you. brilliant so that's so lovely because you must instill so much confidence and self-esteem in, in little young children which is brilliant. Oh, thank you. So oh, I've learned thank something you that, today. That, not Helena. <laughs> I know that some of my students do act because they've been in classes for so long. I mean, I one of my um, older students who's 18, she's left to go to university now. And she started with me, I think it was at the age of six. So she, she started at six years old and then she left to go to university. And that was quite an emotional time for me because oh it makes me feel really old. <laughs> but it also makes me realise how how long I've been teaching her. It's basically her whole childhood and she's done so many shows and dance competitions with me. And um, it, yeah, I mean, I know some of my students now want to actually become performers because they've been, you know, they love coming to classes. So it's, yeah, and we've got shows coming back now. So we're actually allowed back into the theatre this summer for the parents to watch the children do a show. And we haven't been able to do a dance show in about two, three years. So we're all really excited to get back into the theatre. That's amazing. That's so lovely. And actually, just on, on a Welsh note, I, I was speaking to Ian earlier about Alid Jones. Um, and oh, yeah. uh, he, he'd worked with Alid, you know, this was years and years ago when he was with so so high um but um it's um, is it amelia jones that was part of the new she, she's in she's obviously in wales as well i don't know whereabouts are based in wales but she has she's appeared in the new film coda which has been it, it was something to do with i won't mention will smith but it's won an award at the oscars so that was really exciting because she's quite young um and she's a really great actress i, I don't know if you've seen her but anyway you'll see yeah. her in the new new coda film Yay, because she's Welsh. <laughs> no, I haven't seen the film yet. <laughs> I haven't seen the film, but she's fantastic. And I think it's wonderful that, um, you know, she's involved in such a fantastic film and she's very, very talented. So, um, you know, I can see great things in the future for her. And as you say, she's so young as well. She's just done an amazing job. So, uh, yeah, go Amelia. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it seems to run in the family, doesn't it, Victoria? Because uh, obviously with Alid, uh, he started off with Walking on the Air and uh, uh, I, I worked with him uh, when he was a boy chorister, first of all. Uh, and then I, I, I used to work with him on GMTV when he became an announcer um, as well, oh. or, or a presenter on GMTV. So and he, he, he was just the same. He, he, you know, um, he's, he's a typical Welsh person, very nice, very easy to get on with uh, and very chatty. I think actually the whole family is. He's I think, very I think down that, to earth, isn't he? Yeah. I think his wife is, um, she works in a circus. She's an acrobatic. Is she? I think so. So they're a creative family. So, which is, uh, yeah, we love oh, creativity. Wow. They yeah, are, we it love must it. be a family thing, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the thing. Once, if your parents, or at least one of your parents, is a performer or a musician or an actor or a singer or something like that, it's very hard to, to, to not catch on and to have that in your blood system as well. Absolutely. So what, what's in store for you, young lady? Well, uh, we, well, there's lots of things going on. I think one of the main things is um, my performing arts school at the moment. We're gearing up for a big show. It's a very, very big show. 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to be returning bigger and better than ever um, with all the children performing and the, the young adults performing as well. So that's going to be in Cardiff in July this year. And uh, yeah, just all very exciting. We have a few other things coming up as well, but I'm not really allowed to mention that yet. It's something to do with later on this year, but I, I, I've been sworn to secrecy, unfortunately. <laughs> we want to know. Another show. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited. Uh, that's not like you, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> I normally like to say everything, but I, I can't give it away just yet. It's a little bit early in the year. Well, it, it, it's been delightful talking to you again, hasn't it? It definitely has been. Well, you'll be back with us soon, I'm sure, won't you? Sharing oh, the delights you. of I Wales. I would love to return and, and share any more updates from Wales. Well, thank Victoria, you. thank you so much for this afternoon. Time's against us today, so thank you so much for your time today again as well. And always looking stunning, always filling us up with joy and laughter and good thoughts. So have a great day yourself. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me and have a lovely rest of the day, both. And to you. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Royal, bye-bye. Bye. Well, oh. wasn't that a great show today? I think we, we've talked a lot about uh, cancer and, and the aspects of that. We've talked about uh, Ukraine again yeah. um, and these types of things as well. And so I, I think, um, I mean, this whole show is all about uh, really promoting charities, communities, good causes, Absolutely. Uh, current affairs. It's shining the light as well, isn't it, really, when there's, uh, there is dark times. It's, uh, there's, it's a funny old time, isn't it? And not it's to forget, you know, Royally Rich. Yes. Round up. Absolutely. And so, so, the Queen. Uh, and so there could be some quite interesting royal things happening soon as well that we can there will talk be. about. But it's, uh, it's been a great show and a very busy, busy news day, I think. It has been as well. It has been. So I think now is the time to say goodbye for, for, from the two of us. Um, so from uh, me, Ian Pelham Turner. And from me, Helena Shard. This was the Great Britain Voice of London show on ALB UK television. I hope you're having a great day. Please stay tuned for other shows on this channel. Have a great day and goodbye for now. Goodbye. Thank you.